Um, I have many components on an entity, so I thought about creating a secondary entity with half those components on and store a ref to it in the primary entity, then just look up the components when needed, thoughts. Um, so I think the first question you kind of need to ask yourself, you know, is that entirely necessary to do? Um, and I think you can kind of start, like you, you kind of really need to understand like, you know, how many entities of that archetype are going to be, um, you know, basically kind of in your game. And, you know, just see, you know, once you know that, and you kind of also have to look into how many entities of that archetype fit within a single chunk, um, you know, to see if you you actually are, you know, spanning these entities across, you know, many, many, many chunks. Um, so I think it, yeah, really determine, it, it's going to be really important for you to kind of, you know, use some of the um, you know, existing Unity windows to see, you know, whether that is, you know, actually necessary for you to, to kind of split those up. Um, and if it is, then I'd say, you know, just try and split them up as best as you can so that you're not doing a lot of like cross entity referencing. So it's like, you know, if you're like on one entity, you're not like constantly looking at the other entity, like, you know, you kind of want to group, you know, components that are going to be used together on the same entity as much as possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's totally valid to have kind of say, you know, maybe a, a front end type entity that has, you know, it's just kind of like basic, you know, movements, components, physics components, any visual components, things like that. And then maybe, yeah, secondary entity that's just data only things. And it kind of worries about all the, you know, particular stats and everything like that. So I think that's, that's definitely like a valid approach to that. Yeah. And, and also it's like that uh, one of the reasons that we we often talk about like a separation of runtime and offering is that um, if you already um, think more of your components as like a uh, this is the kind of um, like feature set that the, the um, components include then that also uh, kind of helps um, answer your like okay well if I am offering um, a uh, movement uh, component, component and I, I have that set up as my offer, um, it might look like it, you know, this, this uh, game object is being offered into just one entity and uh, that might be fine as a first, first time approach. But then, you know, you go into your profiles and you see, I'm actually rarely ever using uh, my shooting system. It's only being called once, you know, a few moons when someone actually press shoot. Um, then, you know, you go in and you see, well, actually, it might make sense for, like, my offering thing is still the same. Like, it still is adding this shooting component, uh, a shooting offer. Um, but it actually went in and uh, in our baker, it did create additional entity. And it added the shooter to that entity instead. And now, uh, like, probably I still have to make some changes to my system code in order to, for it to be allowed to be a separate entity um because the input still has to be read from there right one, yeah, yeah 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 um, but in this case now you know that that data won't be in the same chunk because it's a separate entity and you only do that uh look up once in a, a few moons um and so you, you you started with something that was as simple as possible it was like all in line but then you looked at a profile and you saw that one thing was uh, off and then you just simply went in and changed the system uh thing about it so all the like from a level uh, designer perspective the, you yourself as a level designer when you're in that mode you hadn't you didn't have to make any changes to to your game object but you still got the benefit um for for that performance and so the, you know whether you split up your components a a shit ton uh, to all these different entities or you split um all your values of separately to components what what actually ends up mattering more is uh, like how you like like chunk chunk rise them and, and like um yeah, yeah just kind of like yeah considering your data layout and I, actually that was one of the points that i brought up in my last video about just going over like what ecs is it's like you know in general one entity is just going to represent one thing but that's not necessarily always the case you know it could be that one entity is like part of a bigger thing. Like there are a bunch of entities that kind of are all kind of, you know, can be considered one thing. 
or even the other way where one entity is kind of representative of a bunch of different things. So, um, you know, it's just really cool that we have kind of have the flexibility to kind of like play around with what an entity is and, and kind of like, you know, just, yeah, just again, figuring out the most optimal way to store and process our data. So yeah, you definitely have a, a lot of flexibility for that. Um, so yeah, again, going back to the question, I just recommend, you know, just getting some good information about, you know, the actual stats, you know, if, if you just have like, you know, one player that has a whole bunch of components on it and it's just, you know, that one player and you, yeah, sure. You're filling up the, the whole 16 kilobyte chunk with all the data that you have on it. You know, that's no problem because there's only one of them. But, you know, if you get to the point where you have, you know, a bunch of different enemies with a bunch of different component types and now you can only fit like four entities within a chunk, then, yeah, maybe you can kind of look into to splitting some things off.